Hey guys, it's Vosk. I'm here with Tails, the Vosk Coin Channel, and today we're going to show you how to use SMOS. So SMOS is one of the best and easiest to use mining operating systems out there. It's super stable, super reliable, has auto updates built in. It works on RX rigs, Nvidia rigs, or I should say AMD, sorry. And basically it works on everything except for Vega right now. So the Vegas are in the works as far as I understand and so is the DSTM miner which is a little bit more effective on Equihash. Right now if you want to mine with SMOS you're going to be using EWBF. So this has been my biggest question lately. How do I set up SMOS? Well that's what this video is all about. I'm going to show you the basics of setting it up. I'm going to move over to a screen capture video and show you, you know, how I actually write SMOS onto the USB. Very simple. And just the basics of setting it up. I'm going to go over how to mine Zencash or you know Zcash, any Equash coin or really anything with EWBF and then also how to mine Ethereum and you know whatever else using Claymore 10. If you guys follow my channel you'll notice I've slowly been moving my entire farm to SMOS and before I get more into SMOS let's go over actually writing it to your USB. So for step one you've got to download HDD raw copy tool. You can google it download it or just grab my link from the description. I would never give you guys a virus or anything crazy like that. You're gonna to go to file Okay, you're going to click this and you're going to navigate to wherever your simple miner file is. You need to download simple miner from simplemining.net. You're going to extract it and then you're going to double click that and click continue. You need to always write the extracted version, not the just compressed version. With that, we're going to go to our target. Our target is going to be our USB that we've inserted or you know anything else. I always write to USB drives. You're going to click start, click yes, and it's going to lock and copy, and we're going to be good to go. It's going to go ahead and write this out. I'm even doing this on a machine that's currently mining. Fast forward to the end, you'll see that this wrote entirely on a mining device in about five minutes. X that out, X this out, and we're going to go down to our files. Once we get over there, we're going to click the USB drive. It's always USB drive D on my machine. Should be the same for yours, most likely. Click config, and once we get in there, all you have to edit is simply your username, which is your email. So you need to set up an account with Simple Mining prior to doing this so you can input your actual uh, username in there. SMOS automatically updates once you put it in, so that's a, that's good to know. Give it a second, let it boot up, let it do its thing, and then you'll notice it'll pop up here under no name. It won't be mining, it'll be set on the default settings and the power limit. If you go into the overclocking, we'll just say six and have nothing here. So let's get to it uh, as far as actually using SMOS. Core, memory, power limit, target temp, fan speed. I mean, all the things you really need. So let's take this 1080 Ti rig I've got right here and I'm going to go to overclocking which is where we just were. My core clock I'm plus 150. You know you can put a minus in here you can take 150 off the core clock and then my memory I'm plus 500. Plus is obviously implied and negative is just minus you know you'd have negative 500. Your power limit is whatever you want to set in wattage. Your target temp and your fan speed you know, you just need to play with this, adjust it to your actual settings and make sure it's working well in your environment. If you want to write individual settings for different cards, let's say I wanted to go over here and some like one or two of my 1060s are being finicky. Well, I can go in here and write a core memory for the first three of 100. And then the third one, I think it's like really super awesome mining card. I'm going to be like, oh yeah, I mean, you can handle a 150 core. And then I'm going to go 100. And this is another really good card. Maybe it's got some awesome memory or whatever. And you know, same with the power limit. If I've got a rig that was say two 1060s and then two 1080 Ti's, I could run a uh, setup like that. I would need to identify which GPUs are registering where, but let's say GPU 0 and 1 were the 1060s, then I'd put it like that, and then GPU 2 and 3 were the 1080 Ti's, I would set it up like that. Again, you know, if I'm writing individual settings like that, I probably want to do that in every regard, you know, so I would have matching settings up here that correspond with exactly what I want down there, you know, whatever you want to do. That was just an example, not exact numbers to use. If you're wondering about the numbers I'm using, you know, I'm no crazy overclock expert here, and I learned a ton from the forums, especially Bitcoin talk. But, you know, here are some of my rigs. On these 1080 Ti rigs, 150 core, 500 memory, 200 power limits is a decent uh, figure. You know, I want to tune that a little bit better, but, you know, that's where we're running right now. So if you click over here to rig groups, you can see 
all kinds of options I've had in here. It's not the cleanest setup I need to go through and I tidy it up. But let's take uh, Supernova right here. So we're going to go to Minor Programs. And I have EWBF selected, okay, for Equihash. And these are the exact settings I have input in there. Um, for these CUDA devices, it helps sometimes. Like I've noticed some rigs, it doesn't matter. The 12 card can be a little bit finicky. So I've got, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 2, 11. And with that, you know, it's properly registering every card. And I have other rigs that aren't 12 cards listed under this same uh, minor setup. So just to show you what I'm talking about, I go over here. We have Zen Supernova on the 12 card and a 6 card 1080 Ti, which I just have labeled as Volk. And with that, they're under the exact same settings. So I click here and I go to Assign Group and I click on Zen Supernova. It applies the exact same settings. The unfortunate part is they're listed under the same worker on Supernova, so it makes it a little more hard to monitor, but very easy if you want to switch things around. Like, say I wanted to mine Zen today, and tomorrow I wanted to mine uh, Bitcoin Gold, and then, you know, Hush got super profitable, or I think a, pu or a pump is coming up, so I'm like, oh, let me go mine some Hush. Very easy to jump around, and I'm not saying to be a pool hopper by any means, but I'm saying that the flexibility, like on NVOC, I'd have to go in there and edit each rig, and it was just uh, it was very time consuming. And you know, we all only have so much time, and we need to be productive with it. We go back in here to rig groups. Let's go over Ethereum real quick. So I'm over here on my F test rig. This is the 12 card that uh, if you saw my recent video about. And again, actually I actually have videos on pretty much every rig listed on here. If you're curious, just check out the channel. Foscoin YouTube and you know that's the uh, MSI rig that was in there and whatever won't go on about that but you know what I'm saying and here we got eth test testing and we're going to claim more eth v10 and let's uh, pull this up again you know dagger Hashimoto and these are the exact settings I have in there all of these settings I'm going to copy and paste into the description below so that you guys can easily grab them like if you wanted to set this up for you you could just come onto my uh, channel description copy and paste this right into simple mining and just come right here and replace my wallet address with yours done I don't even have a worker name set up for this one so it just shows up as default on the pool no big deal you don't need a worker name you know don't get tripped up on little things like that get functional get mining start profiting and again you know I'll come over here to Zen Supernova I get a lot of questions about mining with a uh, Supernova this is how you set it up Voscoin is my username on there and my worker name is Wolf Miner. I'm pretty sure you need to create the worker name prior to setting this up so you go into the Supernova dashboard add worker and I put in Wolf Miner. So it's username dot worker name, and that is your user. Your password is X. Don't get tripped up on all this stuff. Again, if you want to mine a supernova, copy and paste this stuff, and just insert your uh, related info right there. If you're wondering about you know more of a standard pool, let's go over here to the uh, hush pool, and you can see this is what the hush settings look like. This is a little more of a traditional pool in the sense, you know, I've got my wallet address dot worker name. You know, this is a full setup. I could slap my 12 card on here and it would hash away. These are proper settings. And, you know, there's many more pools you can sync up with. But again, you can grab these settings and, you know, translate them to wherever you want to be. Other than that, I mean, Simple Miner is really simple and easy. I mean, that's all in the name. Tidnik really nailed that. Other than that, that's how easy it is to get up and running and up to speed with Simple Mining. All right, guys, so setting up SMOS is really that simple. You pay two bucks a rig, so I don't really recommend it for rigs smaller than six cards necessarily. But, you know, just the ease of use and the remote monitoring and just the stability really kind of pays for that two bucks a month. So I'm very happy with it. And I like to use SMOS so I can focus on other things. And Tails, she just wants to mine Dogecoin. I don't know what's wrong with her lately. I'll see you guys next time.